Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna show you very, very quickly a couple of different ways in the way I like to weld to cast steel. Not that difficult, let's get to it. I just got home from picking up a nice set of 43 inch tires. And no, they're not going on that big, beautiful JKU out there. They're going on the Project Jeep Rock Gobbler that I have been building on this channel now for quite a bit of time. The frame is done. I've moved on with the axles. Semi-professional race car driver. But this Jeep is getting a V8. It's the fastest who gets paid. And it's the fastest who gets late. <laughs> 16 inch coilovers and a frame as I said in one of the frame videos that's capable of doing about 700 miles an hour over some really big rocks. If you ain't first, you're last. We need to make sure that those axles that I have over here, don't tell anybody but I got them from a junkyard, we have to make sure that those are up to the challenge of a 43 inch tire and a big V8. Well, you're gonna have to weld mild steel to cast steel in order to ensure that those will hold up. And this. This is how you do it. Because there's a number of reasons why you would ever have to weld two dissimilar metals. Before we get into it, before I show you the steps, we're gonna take just a minute or so to talk about it. Anytime that you're building a one ton axle for your Jeep, you have to weld on a swap truss. And that swap truss generally gets welded to the mild steel and it's made out of mild steel. Two similar metals, you just MIG weld it like you normally would. But when it comes to welding dissimilar metals, you would have to do that if you wanna keep your factory Super Duty steering knuckles weld on some high steer arms, or if you wanna weld that truss to the diff, which I highly recommend. But I'm also gonna take it a step farther and do what most people should do, but not everybody does, and weld the axle tubes to the center section. Now we're gonna do that because it just makes it that much stronger and that much more likely to hold together to some more extreme abuse, like something with a V8, that's got really big rubbers on the ground. I've already welded this side, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to weld the other side. Now there is some debate online on whether the center section of a Super Duty Dana 60 is even made out of cast steel. This is the center section. This is what we're talking about. This is the piece that's in question because we know the axle tubes over here, over there, that's all made out of mild steel. Well, cast steel or cast iron? That's the big question, and if it's cast iron, you really can't weld to it. You can't MIG weld steel to iron. It really doesn't work. But cast steel, you can actually weld to it. You just need a little bit of a different process because it heats and cools differently than mild steel and it'll pull on that weld and crack it. So you need to make sure that you're actually doing it correctly to get the proper penetration and make sure that weld lasts a good long time or forever. But the way you can check your diff, depending upon what axle you're working on, just to ensure that it's actually cast steel, so you do it with a small drill bit. What you'd want to do is actually come to an inconspicuous area, make sure it's nice and thick, and actually drill into it a little bit. Now, when you're drilling with a metal bit, a small metal bit, into cast steel, the steel will actually come out in like a long, thin strand that kind of curls up inside of the curvature of the drill bit. If you're drilling into cast iron, the steel will actually come out in little chips and flakes. Now there's a couple of things you're gonna need in order to do this. You need a good MIG welder. I happen to have one back here behind me from Eastwood. It's fine, it'll weld up to half inch thick steel. You need an infrared thermometer, but you're also gonna need a torch. Now, I like to use a torch that has a yellow bottle. The yellow bottle means that it's map gas. Map gas burns hotter than propane, which would be a blue bottle, and it just saves you a little bit of time. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's not a ton more expensive. I mean, this bottle here is like 10 bucks, not a big deal. And you're gonna wanna use that to make sure that you heat the steel before you weld. And here's why you have to do it. As I said before, this tube here is mild steel. We know this is cast steel. In order to weld mild steel to cast steel, there's a couple of things we need to know. Cast steel heats and cools much slower than mild steel. Okay, so what that means when we weld something to it is that if we're welding 
two similar metals together, they're both gonna heat and cool at the exact same time, we have nothing to worry about. But when we attach two different metals together with a weld in the center, that means that one piece of steel on one side, if it's different, it's gonna heat and cool at a slower rate than the other side, which means it's gonna pull on the weld. And when it pulls on the weld, it can crack the weld. So we need to make sure that everything stays nice and warm and actually cools down together. That's where the torch comes in, or you can use a fiberglass welding blanket. On this side of the axle, I used that blanket right there. I heated it, I welded it, I wrapped it in the blanket, I left it overnight, and you saw the end result that I just showed you a minute ago. It came out just fine. But it takes time to be able to weld the entire thing, wrap it, and then wait till the next day to unwrap it. Sometimes we wanna move through and do things a little bit faster. There's no need to spend all that time. You can do it a much faster way with that torch. So we're gonna use the map gas torch to preheat the cast, trying to keep it off of the mild steel as much as possible. Periodically stopping to check the temperature. And as you can see here, it ain't quite there yet. So we're gonna use more map gas, heat it a little bit more, constantly moving the map gas around, making sure we don't overheat one area too much and always make sure that when it gets close to temperature, your welder is ready to go so you don't waste any time and you take full advantage. So there's a couple of things going on in that weld that you just saw me do. Number one, obviously, like we've said a couple of times already, dissimilar metals. But number two, you saw me preheat the cast. The reason for that is cast steel not only cools differently than mild steel, but it heats up differently. And heat is basically what's gonna give you your penetration in your weld. You're gonna get penetration in the mild steel because it heats up much faster than the cast. So you have to preheat the cast a little bit. You just wanna be careful preheating that cast because if you accidentally also preheat the mild steel too much, you can warp your axle tube. So you gotta be kinda careful when you're doing anything like this because that mild steel, heating it a lot in one spot for too long will warp it. Once it's preheated though, about 300, anywhere between 300 and 400 degrees, you're ready to weld. Now that mild steel, you're gonna get the penetration there because your welder is gonna be able to heat that up super quickly. But the cast is already heated up a little bit. So now you'll get your penetration into the cast as well. I still spend a little bit extra time on the cast with my welder and then kind of whip the puddle down onto the mild and then back up onto the cast, concentrating more of the heat there, making sure I get the penetration. Once that's done, what you would want to do is take your infrared thermometer and measure the temperature of the cast, the weld, and the mild steel. Now you want all three of those things to be about within 50 degrees of each other. If you notice that the weld is cooling faster than the other two, well now you're risking it contracting as it cools faster than the rest of it, and that's what'll crack your weld. So just simply hit it with your map gas real quick, reheat it, make sure everything stays within that 50 degree range, keep monitoring those three sections, back it down, and then once it gets to about 150 degrees or so, you can kind of just let nature do its thing. You don't have to monitor it anymore, and it'll cool all the way down. Or you can wrap it in the fiberglass blanket like I did and leave it for about 12, 24 hours. It'll cool itself down on its own and kind of keeps the heat in there so that everything cools at the same temp. But guys, that's all there is to it. It's really not all that difficult. A lot of people are afraid of it. They worry about what wire they're using. They worry about the speed. They worry about all different kinds of things. And the truth is, you really don't have to worry all that much about it. As long as it's clean, preheated, and you control how it cools. Like I said here, with either that blanket or that map gas and monitoring the three different parts of your weld. You should be good to go. Guys, that is as simple as it gets. And that is how you weld to cast. That's how I do it on every single axle that I build, on every single set of st high steer arms that I build. It's just how I do it. And guys, it's always worked for me with never any failures. The people that have the failures, well, they didn't get enough penetration on their cast. It's probably because they didn't heat it enough or because they didn't monitor the temperature as it came down enough. But guys, that's all there is to it. Make sure you get out there, you build something, make sure you click that subscribe button, share this with your friends, stick around for the Rock Gobbler build. It's gonna be pretty wild.